Uh, the last person in this first round is uh, Senator Duckworth. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to submit the following articles for the record. Um, there's several, so I'm just going to describe them all first. Uh, the first one is an article that ran in Mother Jones in 2003. It documents that um, the nominee was the Bush administration's point person pushing oil drilling in the Arctic to Wyoming, and that the nominee altered the scientific findings from the Fish and Wildlife Service so that they would fit his political and policy priorities. These findings came from a report funded by BP Exploration and were shared in uh, congressional testimony. The second item is an article that ran in the Washington Post in 2007. It details that senior political appointees in the Bush administration resigned over ethical violations while the nominee was the solicitor of DOI. Those appointees revised scientific reports in an effort to minimize the protections of endangered species. And as you know, the Office of Solicitor performs the legal work for DOI, which includes overseeing the ethics office. The third item is an article that was published in the Wall Street Journal in 2008. It details how when the nominee was at DOI, the Minerals Management Service allowed oil companies to avoid paying royalties for offshore drilling rights, which will cost taxpayers as much as $10.5 billion over about 25 years. The fourth item is an investigative report that was written by the Interior's Inspector General. This report details how employees at the Minerals Management Service created a culture of ethic, ethical failure by consuming alcohol at industry functions, had used cocaine and marijuana, and had sexual relations with oil and gas company representatives. These events occurred on the nominee's watch as solicitor and other leadership roles at Interior. The article further observes that employees had escaped punishment by leaving the department. The fifth item is a press release from DOI which was published in 2012. It indicates that Shell Oil had $25 million in underpaid royalties for federal offshore oil and gas drilling leases in the Gulf of Mexico during the nominee's time at the agency. That money should have gone to states like Louisiana and was settled under the Obama administration. The sixth item is an article that ran this week in the LA Times. It states that as a partner at one of the nation's top grossing lobbying firms, the nominee represented major players in oil, mining, and western water. These are all areas that fall under the purview of DOI that the nominee would regulate if confirmed as the department's deputy secretary. Finally, I'd like to submit the nominee's client list while at Brownstein, Hyatt, Farber, and Shrek. This list includes the who's who of oil companies that the nominee would regulate as deputy secretary. Those are the seven items. The items that you have requested be included as part of the record will be included, although uh, I would probably disagree with uh, many of the summations that you have made there, so I'll look forward to reading them. Of course. Um, clearly, no candidate is perfect. However, what is so shocking about your candidacy, your candidacy, Mr. Bernhardt, is that the scandal and controversies associated with your career stretch over such a long period of time. President Trump promised the American people that he would drain the swamp when he was elected. His words, not mine. Yet he weakened the laws that actually prevent the very type of conflict of interest your candidacy is plagued with. Mr. Bernhardt, a simple yes or no. Are you aware that under the Obama administration's lobby rules, you would not have qualified for this appointment? Yes. OK, thank you. Um, I'd like to yield the rest of my time, Madam Chair, to uh, the senator from Minnesota, Mr. Franken. <laughs> 